So right now, I will be continuing on from my previous video in which I covered the deep muscles and now for the superficial muscles. And we have two of those, the gastro three of those, the gastrocnemius, then we have the soleus, and then we have the plantaris. Now if we start with the origins of the gastrocnemius, point number one to remember is that we have two heads, a medial and a lateral. The medial head is of a bigger size and obviously the heads of dif have different tendons of insertion. Common points about the tendons of insertion, they are both broad and flattened and they both come from different parts of the femur. Starting from the medial head of insertion of the gastrocnemius, which part of the femur? The medial condyle. Which part of the medial condyle of the femur? is interesting basically if you were to draw this as the if i was to sort of like complete this give it a more edginess <laughs> not an edginess a more contour it's kind of like this right so the where is the origin of the medial head of the gastrocnemius which is a very important muscle from where does it happen if i'm kind of like bringing this closer to the camera it happens and if you have a femur you can actually kind of feel it there is a depression which is described as a posterior superior depression because it's on the posterior surface of the medial condyle and is kind of superior to it so we have a posterior superior depression and also not only from there this is the popliteal surface popliteal surface is kind of like you know it's this triangular surface because of the because of you know the linear aspera kind of dividing into two so the insertion so the origin is from the from a posterior superior depression of the medial condyle of the femur and the adjoining parts the adjoining raised parts of the popliteal surface which is a posterior surface of the femur so we can kind of make the origin like this I will repeat this my friends is the is the origin of the medial head of the gastrocnemius and the origin is from a depression a posterior superior depression on the medial condyle of the femur and the adjoining raised parts of the popliteal surface if you have a model you can actually feel for this depression Um, the lateral is a bit different because oh my god I kind of ruined this is because while the um, this was from a depression and from the parts of the popliteal surface the origin of the lateral head is from the lateral supracondyle line itself which demarcates the popliteal surface and from the lateral surface of the lateral condyle right so the popliteus also had its part of its origin from the lateral surface of the lateral condyle and the lateral head of the gastrocnemius also has part of its origin from the lateral surface of the lateral condyle so i'll kind of draw this in like this so now we're talking about the gastrocnemius and what about the insertion of the gastrocnemius the insertion of the gastrocnemius is basically this is the calcaneus bone which I have drawn rather poorly and this is the posterior surface that is visible in my drawing and so the insertion happens along with the insertion of the soleus it's kind of like a, a common insertion on the middle one third of the posterior surface according to Beattie. Right, so I'm going to draw this in. So this is the lateral head. And over here we have the um, insertion of the tendocalcaneus tendon, which is an amalgamation of the tendon of the gastrocnemius and the soleus. The soleus muscle is something we'll talk about now. But before this, as before innervation of the gastrocnemius, is by the tibial nerve right the insertion is as I've said 
the tendon of the muscle of the gastrocnemius fuses with the tendon of the soleus and forms what is known as the tendo calcaneus or the tendo achilles and this is inserted into the middle one third of the posterior surface of the calcaneum this very interesting bone is the calcaneum bone right so this is the gastrocnemius now what is the function of the gastrocnemius now all of the muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg they are flexors because this is the flexor compartment and because the gastrocnemius is crossing the ankle joint it obviously has a role in plantar flexion and a very important role at that gastrocnemius which is the superficial most um, muscle of this um, posterior compartment it has a role in causing rapid plantar flexion that is very important in quickening the speed when a person is walking or running and the, and according to the lines of pd when movement is underway that is movement is happening not starting not ending the quicker acting gastrocnemius they they call it quicker acting because they've been comparing it to the soleus the quicker acting gastrocnemius increases the speed and what has it been compared to like the top gear of a car which is for increasing the speed as opposed to the first gear which is to start the car right so this is the function of the soleus and my apologies the gastrocnemius which has a common tendon of insertion with that of the soleus to form the tendocalcaneus tendon so it's time we moved on to the soleus we were about the origin of the soleus and we talked about the tibialis posterior having its origin from two bones both the bones of the leg what about the soleus the soleus is a bit similar in that regard the one thing i remembered i forgot for the gastrocnemius is that both the heads do have parts of their um origin from the capsule of the knee joint right and another th important thing is that the popliteus um inversely or oppositely is its insertion is basically origin is basically intracapsular that is the insert the origin is below the capsule of the knee joint as the gastrocnemius has two heads basically part of it originates from the capsule of the knee joint so interesting thing to keep in mind if you move onwards to the soleus now the soleus has what is called a dome shaped origin kind of that will kind of make sense if you look at a diagram it does seem to have a dome shaped start to it so where does the origin happen from from the fibula it does happen as the tibia and also the intraosseous membrane so which part of the fibula the back of the head of the fibula this part and as well as the upper one fourth when we're talking about the entirety of the lower three fourth of the shaft of the fibula with the exception of the lowest 2.5 centimeters giving origin to the flexor hallucis longus we left out the upper um, one by fourth part of the shaft as well as the back of the head because that part is giving origin to the very important soleus muscle which is a superficial muscle so what about so this is like forming part of the dome but what about the rest of it obviously it's going to be kind of like this because a dome is like this right um and the tibia from the tibia it's from the soleal line which is over here and the middle one third of the medial border of the shaft but that's all right you can just go with the soleal line and also we have a tenuous soleal arch that arch stretches between the tibia and the fibula but that's entirely too difficult to show on this diagram so you can kind of like try it like this right let's fill this in with color and as you can see it is kind of dome shaped and my apologies I, I was a bit wrong it's not from the interosseous membrane I thought part of it would extend in there 
so not from the interosseous membrane even though the uh, tibialis posterior was so this is the um, origin of the soleus muscle which has its origin from both the bones of the leg but unlike the tibialis posterior not from the interosseous membrane you should be familiar with the term tendinous arch of the soleus and you should know that it is the origin of the soleus one of the superficial muscles which has a dome shaped origin and why is that because it's kind of like this in the shape of a dome very self-explanatory this is the soleus and as mentioned previously the insertion is the same is that of the gastrocnemius now for the function the soleus again it's crossing the just the ankle joint the only joint it is crossing and so again its function is plant deflection of the ankle joint however the soleus is a much powerful muscle and it's basically the first gear it's basically what overcomes the inertia of the body the first plant deflection that initiates walking that's basically its major function so i'm hoping you've gotten this now if we move onwards to the last muscle of the posterior compartment which is the plantaris right the plantaris is a vestigial muscle and it's kind of like between the gastrocnemius and the soleus if you do a dissection it can be seen quite easily the belly portion is very small but you will see the tendon the tendon being so long is quite visible in most cases again it is vestigial and it is believed that an expansion of the plantaris it is what makes the plantar epineurosis of the sole of the foot i will repeat it is a short belly and a very long tendon so where does the origin happen for the plantaris again from the um we talked about the lateral supracondylar line offering origin to the lateral head of the gastrocnemius and also the lower parts of it the lower parts of the parts of this line offers origin to the plantaris like kind of like this we can draw it and also we have a ligament which is the poplique oblique popliteal ligament which kind of crosses this um, intercondylar notch so maybe I can use green for that so the part of the origin of the plantaris is also from the ligament so it is a ligamentous origin right so again I can kind of fuse so the origin of the plantaris which is a vestigial muscle of the superficial compartment found in between the gastrocnemius and the soleus which basically has a very short belly and a very long tendon um, it has two origins two points of origin one from the oblique popliteal ligament and from the lower part of the lateral supracondylar line right this is the plantaris and where does the insertion of the plantaris happen it also happens on the calcarium but the insertion is not common with that of the gastrocnemius and the soleus the insertion is believed to be a bit medial to that of the insertion of the gastrocnemius and the soleus we can kind of like draw this part over here label it as the plantaris so the function of the plantaris is rudimentary it does kind of help the gastrocnemius in, which is what makes walking get quicker because of plantar action but it's largely rudimentary and what kind of functional importance we kind of use the tendon for transplantation purposes all right so i'm hoping you got this if you did please like subscribe and leave a comment